So the title of my message this morning is, It is Finished. It is Finished. If you will turn with me to the book of John, chapter 19. The book of John, chapter 19, verse 28. By the way, excuse me, the baby needs a bottle at 11 o'clock. <laughs> I didn't see that in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. <laughs> That's in Angela Mothering 101. John 19, starting in verse 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was a set vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with the vinegar, and put on it hyssop, and put it to his mouth. And when Jesus therefore received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Lord, I thank you for those words. That means that your sacrifice was accepted. Amen. That it is complete. It is put to an end. That we as believers lack nothing. That the enemy's plans for our life has been expired. That we're going over. That you're going to fill us up. That you're going to perform that which you said you would. Because your word does not return void. God, I thank you for the word of God. That is truth. That is sharper than any two-edged sword. That pierces the joy and the marrow and the soul and the spirit. That, that gives life when we feel lifeless. That gives hope when we feel hopeless. That gives light when we are in darkness. God, for the word of God. Lord, I pray let it be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path this day. Lord, let it grow richly in our hearts that it would never escape us. Your word says that the Holy Spirit will bring your word back to remembrance and it will glorify the Son. God, I pray that every time and every day we put our feet on the ground, that the word of God will be brought back to our remembrance and that we would apply it to our lives and we would see life come. Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, happy Thanksgiving. So when I began to prepare this message, I, I thought about the word thankfulness. And I began to think about what we're grateful for. You know, and a lot of the times when you think about gratefulness or giving thanks, a lot of the times we thank the Lord or we thank, we're thankful for things. Like we're thankful for our family and we're thankful for a good job and we're thankful for our kids and we're, and we're thankful for our church and all these things and I be, I began to think, you know, I hate to say it like this, but one day all of that's going to fade away. And I began to ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you would have me to say this morning? And he said, Angela, be thankful that I accomplish everything you need on Calvary. Every single thing that you need, if you walked in here this morning and you need healing, it is here. <laughs> when, when, when Naya was sing, singing, heaven is coming in this room. I thought to myself, but heaven is already here. You hear what I'm saying? You know, faith is an action word. If we believe something, we should be set in action after it. We believe it, and then we receive it. That word, listen to this. I looked up this word. I was teaching my Sunday school class this last Sunday. That word receive means I come into possession of something. 
Listen to what I'm saying. When you believe something, you're going to go after it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And when you believe it, you go to the Lord to what? Receive it. Yes. Yeah. When Jesus said it is finished, that means it's completed and you have a job as a believer, right? To come in to possession of it. Amen. But sometimes we don't know what we possess. You hear what I'm saying? Whether it's by ignorance or the enemy has come in to pollute your mind to get you to believe that you haven't already received, come into possession, legal right. Yes. When you possess something, it's your legal right. Yes. It's yours. If you were to go get in my car and drive down the street, I'd be like, get out of my car. <laughs> That's my car. I pay for that. Yes. And the bill ain't pretty. <laughs> well, when Jesus died on Calvary, the debt payment wasn't pretty. Yes. Come on. And he died to give it to you. But you have to, as an individual believer, have to go receive it. Pastor Matt, I can't look at Pastor Matt and let Pastor Matt receive for me. My husband can't even receive for me. I need to go possess it myself in order for me to receive it. I need to believe it, and I need to receive it. But Jesus already did it. See, that's where we end up getting messed up. <laughs> the enemy will come in and tell you that it, it's not yours. Or you haven't received it. So John wrote this book. And if you know anything about John, John was the one who said, I am the disciple whom Jesus loved. Yes. And we have to get that in our spirit. Amen. Shelby, you are the disciple whom Jesus loved. Hallelujah. Edwina, you are the disciple whom Jesus loved. Oh, yeah. Laura, you are the disciple whom Jesus loves. You, We've got to get the love. Brennan, you are the disciple whom Jesus loves. we got to get that in our spirit. Yeah. Because yeah. it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Oh, it's his love that leads us to him. I'm not saying that Jesus isn't holy and that we got have, we should strive to walk worthy of our call, strive to walk holy before him, but it's not his holiness that's going to keep us. It's the love of God yes. that constrains man. Yes. It's the love of God that picks man back up. It's the love of God that keeps drawing you in. His mercy endures forever. Yes. And great is his faithfulness. Yes. When you look at the work of Christ, you'll know his love. Yes. It was the greatest expression of love ever given to man. And when we give ourselves to one another and lay our lives down for one another. Ooh. Yes. I have to lay my life down for my husband and he's got to lay his life down for me. <laughs> That's right. Uh -uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they'll know we are Christians yes. by our love. love. Yes. Not by you beating them in the head with Come the word. On. Come on. By your love. That's right. I'll never forget one day. This is a side note. I was putting the Christmas ornaments on the tree. And when I first got saved. And when I first got saved, guys, I was zealous. I was really zealous. Like Peter calling down fire from heaven. Like I was like, I was like, did you know you're gonna go to hell? Like, like, but it was in the heart of like I wanted people to get saved. Yeah. Right? And I'll never forget my brother during Christmas time was there. And I was like, Chris, and I was trying to tell him about Jesus. And I was pouring out all the scripture I knew, you know what I mean? I was just trying to get him to get it. And he's like, Angela, I don't want to hear about this Jesus. And the Lord convicted me at that moment and said, don't beat him into the kingdom.
kingdom of God. <laughs> Love him into the kingdom of God. And I stood so convicted because I was like, oh, yeah. I didn't have to prove anything. I had to be something. Let me say that again. You don't have to prove anything. You have to become something. And the only way you become what God wants you to become is knowing what he's done for you. Because knowing what he's done for you will draw you closer to him want you, and you'll want to serve him because what he has done is so amazing. Yes. All those songs that she was singing, I was like, oh, nice, sing it again. <laughs> sing it again because that's the gospel. Yes, yes. I am here for you. God, come and do what you do. Yes. Lord, we're here. Miracles happen. And I was thinking about, you know, we want to see all these grand miracles. And look, I want to see miracles too. I want to see people being healed. I want to see bodies being raised. I want to see all these happen. But I was thinking to myself, it's a miracle that we got up and walked in here this morning. Hallelujah. No, really though. That's right. No, really though. That's right. It's a miracle that we're not bedridden in depression. Oh, yeah. Come on. Because some of the stuff we walk through yes. is so dark. That's right. I don't know how people, I really don't, Pastor Matt, I don't know how people do it. Now that I'm saved and I got the truth, I'm like, I don't even know how people make it. That's right. Because I need the spirit of God every single day to say, Angela, get up. <laughs> Angela, we got to keep going. Angela, keep believing me. Keep trusting me. I've got your best interest in mind. Yes. I've got it. The Lord says he is good. That's who his character is. And the devil lied to you this morning and told you that God isn't good because you don't understand your situation. God is still good because that's who he is. Yes. God is still faithful because that's who it is. He is. It just doesn't look like you want it to look right now. That's right. But God wants to do something greater than you could ever imagine. Right. And he's in the works. He didn't forget about you, Miss Matilda. He didn't forget about you, Bridget. He didn't forget about you, Troy. He did not forget about you, Troy. Amen. You hear me? He did not forget about you. Amen. He didn't forget about you. He loves you. Yes. He loves you so much that if you were the last person on earth, he would have died for you anyway. Yes. If you were the only person there, Cameron, he would have died for you. Yes. Just you. Because that's how much he loves you. Um, and, I, and look, John had an understanding of that. Yes. <laughs> he had an understanding of the love of God that continued to draw him. He had such an understanding that he laid his head on the breast of Jesus. Yes. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. My husband's the only one I'm laying my head on. But that's because of our relationship. That's right. I might lay my head on my mom. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because of relationship. There's a closeness. Jesus wants you to be so close that you can hear his heartbeat. Yeah. That's the every day. Hallelujah. Beating for you. Yes, being for you. I died for you. So John wrote this gospel. And like you could say, well, you don't know. You don't know what I've been through. You don't, you don't know how much I've messed up. You don't know. So how can Jesus love me? Well, we talked about this last night and I knew the answer right away. Because James and John were called the son of thunder. And they were trying to call down fire from heaven. Yes. And Jesus said, no, that's not how we're doing it. They had an attitude problem, y'all. That's right. Anybody testify? No, 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 no. <laughs> My attitude needs to be checked. Look, at, at Valley Worship Center, we did this thing with the kids, and we would say, attitude check. And they would all scream, praise the Lord. Yeah. And sometimes we need to do that as adults. Yeah. Amen. Check yourself. That's right. Attitude check. <laughs> Praise the Lord! Can, can we do that? Ready? I'm going to say one, two, three, attitude check, and you're going to scream praise the Lord. All right? You ready? Ready? One, two, three, attitude check! Praise, praise the Lord! Lord. Come on, ready? One more time. Attitude check! Praise the Lord! Yeah, doesn't that feel good? <laughs> Sometimes you just got to get up and begin to praise Him. Yeah. He says, have faith like a little 
bring the children unto me and have faith like this. And John and James calling down fire from heaven. And Jesus said, no, that's not the way I want to do things. But look, he uses us despite us. Yes. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yes. <laughs> well, unless you have halos, I don't know. Because I don't. Jesus will use you despite you. Because he's seen what they could become as they continue to be his what? Disciple. And a disciple means a learner, a pupil, yes. a follower. You need to constantly, I need to constantly, we need to constantly be learning of him. Yes. Be desiring him. Right. Be reading his word. Say, well, sometimes I just don't desire him. Duh. The Holy Spirit puts that in you. Yes. Yes. You didn't do anything. Nothing. Sorry. The Holy Spirit put the desire in you to want to serve him. Yes. To want to come to church this morning. Yes. Right. You didn't do that. That's right. So what do we do? When I when I'm when I'm maybe struggling with hungering and thirsting, God Make me hungry. Yes. Oh, is that simple? Yes, it's that simple. Right. God, put a desire in me to serve you. Help me surrender. Oh, God. Yes. Help me give you everything you've asked me to give you, which is everything. That's right. Just in case you didn't know. Mm -hmm. He asks for everything. Everything. His life for yours. It's the best exchange you'll ever make. Yes. Uh, I mean, my, my wedding vows, they were a great exchange. But the best exchange I ever made was when I gave my heart to Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Because in return, he put his spirit in me. Yeah. And now his spirit in me causes the victory. Yes. The spirit of God in me causes freedom. The spirit of God in me gives me joy. Yes. Attitude check! Praise the Lord! Man, I need the kids. Where are the kids at? <laughs> that, that, that's what the Lord is like. You in the grocery store pushing your buggy, murmuring and complaining your day. Come on. And the Holy Ghost is going to say for watch from now on. He's going to be like, attitude check. <laughs> and you're going to have to say, praise the Lord. <laughs> your spouse is getting on your nerves. <laughs> attitude check. Praise the Lord. but the, the first three are synoptic meaning similar but the book of John is different it's universal and it shows the heart of God rather than just the actions and Jesus' heart was expressed on Calvary listen it was only his heart that drove him to die for us yes. he didn't just make up in his mind I'm going to die for them it was a heart posture thank you Jesus and that's what we need as believers. I might be standing upright. I might be walking. But what's the posture of my heart? Because Jesus was bowed. It was surrendered. It was given. But it's too hard, Angela. I, I don't even know how to surrender this thing. God, I don't know how to surrender this thing. Lord, but you see it, and I know you want it, and I want to give it to you, but I don't know how. God, I surrender. God, this thing keeps coming up in my life. This battle keeps raging in my heart. I know that your blood was enough. God, I surrender. I don't know how to get rid of it, but you do. 
It's up to you, Lord. And I guarantee you, a year from now, you're not going to look like you looked a year ago. I guarantee you, a day from now, you're not going to look like you did the day before. If you constantly pursue after the heart of God. John, if you put this on, on the board for me, John 10, 17 says this. Therefore, does my father love me because I lay my life down that I might take it again? No man take it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it again. This is a commandment I have received from my father. To lay down, like I just said, means it denotes an upright position, an active position. I'm actively moving about my day, but I'm utterly prostrate in my heart. It's a commandment from the Father. You have been appointed to bow, to settle in, to sink in, to give in to the person of Jesus. You are to lay down your life as Jesus laid down his life for the Father. He had the power to lay it down and he had the power to take it back up again. But he made a choice to what? To lay it down. Why? Because the plan of God from the beginning of time was always it is finished. It was always the redemption of man. It was always to bring man back to himself. The plan of God from the beginning was always for you and him to be in right relationship with one another. Amen. He always wanted you to be restored. He always wanted your family to be restored. Yeah, he always wanted your children to be restored. And he still does. But just as Jesus had a choice, we have a choice. We're not robots, y'all. He ain't going to force us. It's not like, I lay my life down. It's not like that. It's not like that. There's a wooing. There's a drawing. There's a knocking. I'm here. Robert, lay it down, Rob. I'm just messing with Robert. I don't know what he got going on. <laughs> lay it down, Hannah. Lay it down, Chris. Every day, too. Like, you got to wake up every day and lay down your life. Every moment, actually. Yes. Ooh, buddy, get on the work scene, and all of a sudden, somebody rub you the wrong way. <coughs> oh, man, here it is. <laughs> and then you got to lay down. <laughs> lay it down. Whatever it is, lay your life down. Lay your unforgiveness down. Yes, Lay your bitterness down. Yes. It's not worth holding on to. Right. Lay your resentment down. Yes. Oh, lay wanting justice for yourself yes. down. Yes. Lay your doubt and unbelief down. Lay it all down. So I'm actively going about my day, but my heart is continuously prostrate before the Lord God. I lay it down. God, I might not understand it, but I lay it down. Why? Because you already said it was completed. You already said it was finished. You already said you were going to do what you said you were going to do. You already said I'm delivered. You already said I'm healed. You already said I'm free. You already said that heaven comes down to earth. You already said the spirit of God now lives inside of me. So God, here I am. I lay it down. I lay it down again at your feet. Why? Because a servant isn't greater than his master. Oh, that's good. Amen. Amen. So if Jesus said, I lay my life down, we in turn say, I lay my life down. So I want to travel through this. Travel through the sacrifice of Jesus with this in mind. Think about this. Jesus loves us so much that he had the power. Power means he had the legal jurisdiction and authority to lay his life down and take it up again. See, the Jews... And the Romans didn't just hang him on the cross, and he had no power. He could have jumped down, slayed them all. He could have destroyed everything. He was God. He was 100% man and 100% God. 
but he chose not to rely on his deity, but to rely on his humanity and rely on the spirit of God like we do. And he chose with the legal jurisdiction to do anything he wanted to lay his life down. That's love. That's love. I want you to keep that in mind. He laid his life down. And with the purpose of committing to the will of the Father, knowing that his sacrifice, listen, would result in your deliverance, your redemption, and your eternal relationship with Jesus. Jesus had that in mind. Micah, he had you in mind. I'm going to deliver Micah. I'm going to set her free. I'm going to deliver Chase. I'm going to set him free. Generation after generation after generation. I feel that generation after generation after generation. I'm going to do such an eternal work that is not just with the parent, it's with the child and the child's child and the child's child, child and the child's child, child and the child's child, 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 child. You ever read the book of Matthew when you get in the gene- genealogy and it's like and, and he got him and he got him and, he, and I'm just like I'll skip to the end. <laughs> no idea what these names even mean. But that's what Jesus does. He yeah. says generation to generation to generation to generation to generation. You think your children aren't going to be saved, but they are. Yeah. They are going to be saved. They are going to be saved. They are going to serve the Lord. Why? Because you stood. Yes, amen. You stood. Yes. You did. Yes. It might not look like you want it to look right now. But Jesus already said, it is finished. Yes. And the chains are broken. Yes. And there's deliverance in his name. Yes. Look, sometimes our faith is being tested, and we've got to hold on. And God's got is working over here and get in the situation just like He needs it to be, so that they look up. Yes, that's good. So that's what He did with us. That's right. I mean, I wasn't 23 till I got saved in jail in a jumpsuit. <laughs> Come on. And I don't think my mom was like, yeah. <laughs> This is how it should be. Come on now. She wasn't. She wasn't. But that's what it took to get me where I needed to be. To get me to look up. To say, okay, Lord, I believe it's finished for me. Yes, Lord. So that Jesus could send me all the way to Mississippi with Jeff. (laughs) glory glory and that we could teach Selah and McCartney and Ezra and Asher how to live and any other children after dot 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 (laughs) (laughs) hey look let me tell you all something can I be real somebody said this to me at the gym and I actually he says good old and he loves the Lord, and he's like, Angela, how many kids you gonna have? I said, I don't know. I mean, I want some more, but it's just a lot. And he was like, you need to have some more. I said, why, Gus? He said, we need believers having kids. He said, they out there in the streets having all these kids, running rampant for the world. We need to start We're going to do it. We're going to raise up our own little troop. (laughs) But that why? That they would believe and that they would receive and that the power of God would move in their lives and they would know what Jesus has done for them and then they could go tell their kids. Look, McCartney and them talk about Jesus at school. Amen. We need them making little disciples. Yeah. Little disciples making little disciples. Yeah. Telling people about Jesus. The first thing every time they come to me and Jeff and look, they'll be like, there's this boy at school. I'm like, does he love Jesus? 
Amen. There's this girl at school. Does she love Jesus? <laughs> That's my first. I, I asked them the other day. I said, what's the first words out of my mouth when you start telling me about someone? Does they love Jesus? <laughs> I said, That's right. That's right. That's Amen. come on. That's right. And they'll go to school and talk to their friend. Look, Ezra is great. Is Ezra in here? Where you go? Ezra, Ezra goes, Miss Angie, guess what? I said, what? He said, I invited my friends to church. Two of them are coming. I said, that's right, baby. That's how you do it. Yeah. Little disciples making little disciples. Yeah. Inviting them to church. Inviting them to hear about Jesus. Because if the kids get it, guess what? Then the parents are going to get yes. it too. Well, no joke. They'll be the first ones to convict their behinds. That's right. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Look, my friend Holly, She, I don't think she'll care if I say this. Her her son, Cord, little six-year-old, he's a little hunter. He'll hunt them deer. Six. Holding that deer up like this, dead. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> right? We from Mississippi. <laughs> we kill deer in Mississippi. <laughs> and but there's a bully at school. And Holly called me. She said, Angela, can you just pray? Pray for Cord. His name's Cord. I like that. Threefold Cord isn't easily broken. Pray for Cord. <clears throat> and this bully is like for legitly taking his lunch money. Wow. wow. Taking his stuff. <clears throat> and they told the teachers, and nothing's getting done. <laughs> it's like they can't do anything about it or something. They, so everybody's so easily offended. <laughs> But I was like, how is this just? And look, they from Mississippi, y'all. Holly goes, you know what, Cord? Just give them one. <laughs> just one. Just one hit. That's her baby, y'all. Could you imagine if your kid was going to school and they, there's some bully taking his money and taking his lunch and taking his stuff and nothing's getting done about it? He was like, look, she's like, just nail him once and he'll be done he won't come for your stuff no more and cord goes but mama oh hallelujah didn't you say jesus said to love her enemies didn't you say that jesus said to turn the other cheek yes lord and she was like Angela, what could I say then? <laughs> I'm telling him to punch him. And he's saying, didn't you say? My Lord. He said, he said, how's he gonna know Jesus? Oh, wow. And I was, wow. Like, <laughs> and I was like, well, Holly, he got you there. <laughs> I mean, what do you say? Hallelujah. Listen. What? Look, and she's like, "Well, I'm sorry, baby. Then, then you're just gonna have to stop. You're just gonna have to take it. Then, if that's what you're deciding to do." <laughs> but I said, "You know, Holly, he's right. Because what if he's the only Bible he reads one day? Mm. Our lives matter. Mm. What if we're the only Bible someone sees on your workplace, in the grocery store?" I love, I love Robert. Robert, what's that story when you said, um, uh, are you going to tell them about their G? Oh, yeah, they, they were argue, we were arguing or something, right? There was an argument going on. And he said, well, are you going to tell them about the, your Jesus like that? <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, you argue, and then you turn around. I say that to my husband sometimes when, look, he can't stand. I'm sorry, Jeff. I know. Jeff tells me I always put him out there, and then I never make him sound good at all. <laughs> great husband. He loves the Lord, y'all. I just want you to know. But if somebody cut him off in traffic, or if they're going real slow and just not driving right, and Jeff will pass him on the double line. Jeff. And I said, baby, what if you're up there leading worship one day, and that person that you drove around on <laughs> in front of the altar. What's she going to do then? <laughs> I love you, baby. You are a good man of God. Look how we all got our stuff. Look, we all got our stuff. Look, I'll tell Jeff off in a second. And he'll be like, you really? That's your testimony to these kids. I'm like, oh, Lord. 
You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Anyway, we're disciples making disciples. And our life matters. Yes. Our life matters. So I want to remind you as we travel through this, um, Sandy, if you would put up the first picture for me. First picture. Jesus was scourged. He was beaten. He was brutalized. The Bible says in John 19, 1, that Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Roman, Roman scourging was a hideous torture. Took thin elm rods or straps, had them leaden balls and sharply pointed bones attached to them. The stripes were delivered on the bent back of a victim. How many kids I taught in here? Case and should be okay. Yes. Bent back of a victim mm. as the victim was bent and fastened to a pillar. Usually brought blood on the first blow to the quivering flesh. Many died under these blows. And I thought this interesting. 800 years before, the prophet Isaiah was pointing to Jesus. Yeah. In Isaiah 53, 4, it says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did not esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we are healed. So I began to think of those words. It is finished. Well, it was finished, started here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, right. It started with each blow that was taken to the back of Jesus. Remember, I started this message talking about what we're thankful for. Okay? Because everything else is going to fade, but are we thankful for each strike that Jesus took to his back for our healing? Amen. The word says, surely has borne our griefs. That means to lift up, to carry our grief. Grief isn't just sorrow, but it's anxiety, weakness, calamity, sickness. He carried our sorrows, our anguish, our affliction. Listen. Yet we did not esteem him. Do we still do that today? We did not properly consider or regard what he's done for us. Mm. Wow. I think we might do that today. But he was wounded. So it says we didn't regard him, but he continued to go forward. Even though we don't regard what's he, what he has done. But he was wounded, meaning broken, for our rebellion and for our sin. Mm -hmm. He was bruised. That word bruised, when we think of a bruise, we just think of something that we, we nipped our knee and we got up and we got a bruise on our body. That word bruise in the Hebrew means he was beaten to pieces. Huh. Can we get thankful today? Yes. He was being to pieces for our iniquities, for my mischief, for your mischief, for your evil, for my evil. And the chastisement of it, our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, every wound laid to the back of our master, we are healed. Meaning we are mended, we are cured. We are in repair. We are made whole spiritually and physically. Every strike, if you'll show the next picture for me. It's a little graphic, y'all. But every strike that was laid upon him each time 
He said, Gabby, Naya, Rich, Jennifer, Sabrina, Bree, Mr. Kirk, Miss Brenda. Each strike, he thought about his creation and said, I'm going to do what they can't yeah. so that I can spend eternity with them. Next picture, if you would. Stay there for me. It says, the soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. The crown of thorns was known as a victor's crown. In this picture, I see no victory at all with the natural eye. Oh, but if you could see in the spirit, when they planted that crown of thorns upon his head, he said, I'm not only going to set them free, but I'm going to set their mind free. Yeah. Oh, because the mind is a battlefield. Yeah. If you remember the demoniac, we, whoever, whoever missed last night's uh, Bible trivia, we were awesome, just so you know. <laughs> Every single one of us were victors. Yeah. Pastor Matt threw out the negative points. Yeah. 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 Hey, that's what Jesus does. Yes, he, does. he throws out all the negative points that are against you, and he says, I'm going to wear this crown of thorns oh. for you so that you can have victory over the mind. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because the mind is a battlefield. Come on. He said it's a victor's crown. Y'all remember the demoniac? Come on. The demoniac needed deliverance from a demon. And that, listen, even as believers, the enemy can speak to us so much that it can drive us into a place of darkness, in a tomb. When we're in the tomb, it's a place of death. Even as a believer, you can choose to make your dwelling in a tomb. Mm. You better preach. And he was in there cutting himself day and night. Why? Because the oppression of the enemy was so great. He thought his only relief was to cut himself. Listen, suicide nowadays is one running more rampant than it ever has. And you'd be surprised the number of young people that actually cut themselves. Listen, the Bible can be applied anywhere. That's right. And it doesn't have to just be a physical cut. You can be cutting yourself in, in your own mind. Mm -hmm. And cutting yourself off from the power of God. Yes. It, it, Jesus died to give you. And Jesus came on the scene and he said, who are you? And they said, Legion, we are many. And he said, come out of here. And he was delivered. And it said what? He was clothed in his right mind. My Lord, my Lord. He was already looking to what he was going to accomplish when he said it was finished on Calvary. And he was able to apply that to his ministry on earth to show us, I have clothed you, Mike, in your right mind. That's right. The moment you say yes to Jesus, he establishes your mind. But guess what you have to do? Keep setting your mind back on him. It says, he whose mind is stayed on me is found in perfect peace. Wow. Yeah. I don't have peace. Is your mind? Wow. Wow. But our mind, look. My heart is prone to wander, prone to leave the God that I love. But it starts in the mind. All of a sudden, you got to process whatever information or whatever situation or whatever voice is talking to you. Come on. And then we have to set our minds on things above, not on things yeah. of this earth. So we see this. So listen, I'm going to tell you this. So now I'm saved. He clothed me in my right mind. But what do I do with this battle? Wait, because he, he bore the crown of thorns for me. I should be grateful and thankful for that. 
Yes. I should be grateful. So what do I do as a believer if, okay, he said he already clothed me in my right mind, but I'm battling. Romans 12, 1 says this. I beseech thee. I beg you. Bridget, I call you near. Therefore, brethren, believers, by the mercy of God, the crown of thorns was the mercy of God expressed to you. That you present yourselves, you as an individual, yield and surrender your what? Your bodies. Your bodies, your mind, as a living sacrifice. How can a sacrifice be living? If you identify with Christ, you identify with his death. Your old man is dead. You are buried with him. And your new man is now resurrected. That makes you a living sacrifice. He said, listen to this. This is acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable service. God fully agrees and accepts a living sacrifice that presents themselves before him. This is your rational, logical service. This is what you're supposed to do. You're continuously, based on the mercy of God, present yourself. As a living sacrifice, all things are dead, now you are new. And it says, wait, don't miss the next verse, y'all. Sometimes we say on one verse and we miss the next. It says, be not conformed. Uh-oh. Be not fashion-like. Do not pattern your lifestyle after the things of this world. Ooh, Jesus. What does my life look like? Mm. If someone was to take some snapshots of my life, would they see the world? Or would they see Jesus? Now look, if we take Polaroids, some of them Polaroids are going to be messed up. (laughs) But if we take a movie, y'all hear me? We take a movie from beginning to end. We might see some mess ups, but we're going to keep getting up. Come on, by the blood of Jesus, by the mercy of God, by presenting ourselves a holy and acceptable living sacrifice before God. It says, be not conformed, be not fashioned like or pattern yourself after the world, but be ye transformed, changed, transfigured. By what? Yes. By what? Yes. The renewing of your mind. Hey, Naya flips houses for a living. She renovates, she rebuilds, she tears down. And she puts it back up, and it looks different, and it looks new, and it looks like something you will want to live in. That's what Jesus wants to do to our mind. Our minds have been polluted by the things of this world. And hey, it's daily polluted. Let me tell you something. You can walk down the street and look at billboards, run into magazines in the grocery store, scrolling on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, you can watch in the news. Come on. Having conversations, being on the job with people that aren't saved. Yes. And your mind is constantly having to compute information and be polluted by the things in this world. But the Bible says, you, believer. Yeah, yeah. Do not fashion your life. Yes, right. Don't be conformed in your heart and your mind. After the things of this world, but be transformed yes. by the renewing, the renovating, the rebuilding of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the what perfect will of God. Amen. The will of God is that your mind be transformed. Yes. Because if we can think right, 
then we can believe right. Yeah. Then we can act right. Hallelujah. Uh-oh. Let me say that again. Do it. In case you missed it. If we think right, then we can believe right. That's good. And then we can act right. Hallelujah. Yes. Look, if you try and act it and you don't believe it or you don't think it, That's guess good. what? You're just a hypocrite. Come on, I'm just a hypocrite. Mm. And guess what? It's not going to be something that's an eternal work or that you can stay with because we just play in it. Wow. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm. It takes a renewing of the mind by yielding and surrendering and presenting ourselves to God and believing the word of God. So what can we be thankful for? We can be thankful that in the book of Revelations 14, 14, it says, I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud sat like one clothed in the son of man, having his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. That means that he might have wore this crown on this day, but he is wearing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords crown, and he's coming back. That he's coming back, and he's a victor. This didn't look like victory, but it was victory. And he did it for you. So if you could say, I don't have any family to spend with this Thanksgiving. I don't have all this. Listen, he was beaten and wounded for your transgressions and for your healing and for your cure. The, the crown of thorns was placed upon his head so that your mind and my mind could be renewed by the power of God. I, oh, so maybe we should start getting thankful this Thanksgiving. Yes. Getting thankful. It says this, Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Why do I say that? Because... After, next picture please, after they put the crown of thorns upon his head, they clothed him in a purple robe to mock him about his royalty. Mm. Mm. But, mm. 700 years before this happened, Isaiah was saying, there's going to be a child that is born. Yes. And the government is going to be upon his shoulders. Yes. He's going to be the mighty God. The Prince of Peace. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Counselor. Listen, I know we love Christmas time, but Christmas is every day, y'all. Yes. A gift has been given for you and me. Hallelujah. And he is royalty. Yes. He might have not looked royal then. But God was setting him up so that what? We could spend eternity with him. Y'all remember that song? Gabby, I know you know it. He came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross. My death to pay. From the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, I did that pretty good, huh? Yeah.
That's not going to profit really much. It's going to keep this temple healthy. But he said, exercise the mind. Yeah. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ, who being in the form of God, his deity, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Ooh, no reputation. Ooh, we play with that one, huh? We want a reputation. We want, we want to be seen for something. He said, let yourself be of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Yes. That's so good. So we had a servant. Oh, Pastor Matt offended me so bad last night. I was going to let you know. I was vacuuming the floor. I forgive you. I was vacuuming. And he goes, Angela. Look at you in helps ministry. <laughs> and I said, I'm thinking to myself, have I never vacuumed this floor before? And I know that I have. But the Bible says, be of no reputation. So I had to be like, you know what, Lord? This is about me and you. Because yeah. you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to stop the vacuum. And be like, okay then. Clean the church yourself. And I, <laughs> I wasn't even thinking that way at all. But I said, Lord, I'm going to finish this. Because yeah. uh, I love you. Yes, Lord. I love you, Lord. Yes, Lord. But as the matter of my little feelings. <laughs> but I'm going to keep that. No, it ain't got worse. My mom walked up to me <laughs> and said, Look at you with the vacuum. <laughs> I said, devil! Devil, you liar! I know I'm clean. But he wanted to get me all messed up. Come on, come on. And my mind all torn in. All in my feelings, uh-huh. All in my feelings. So I come up here, preach this message offended. Mm. And I said, no, Lord. I'm going to be of no reputation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it hurts, Lord. My pride is hurting God. Yes. <laughs> but God, yes. I'm going to serve you. Hallelujah. Uh, and, and that's how the Lord works. That is. In the little things. Come on, come on. Be of no reputation to the point of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He came down from heaven to what? To show the way. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. He lowered himself and became obedient unto the death, even the death of the cross. So he was showing us, even though I bankrupt heaven and left my home in heaven, I came to earth to make a way for you. I came to earth even though I'm royalty I'm God I'm going to be of no reputation to the point of 39 lashes upon the back of my skin upon the crown of thorns 6 inch um, thorns pressed into my skull to the point where they mock me and scoff me of my royalty and put a purple robe on me and say hail king of the Jews to the point I'm going to be of no reputation because I know the benefit after I die for you I'll be able to receive you as mine oh how we should be grateful but you know what I like I like this the end result was this, Revelation 17, 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. He is the Lord of lords and the King of kings, and they that are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Let me read that again. These shall make war with the Lamb, that which makes war with Christ. And the Lamb shall what? overcome them. That means subdue, prevail, and get the victory. Those that are attacking him, he shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and the king of kings. And they that are with him, are you 
it with them. Yes. Are called and chosen and faithful. That means they are appointed, they are selected, and they would be found believing. Praise God. Are we found believing every single day? So John, I love this because John, he comes encounter with the crucifixion, face to face with the crucifixion. He watched his Savior die. The same man that laid his head upon his breast, he watched him be crucified. He watched the scourging and the nails upon his head and his hands the, and the thorns upon his head. He watched it as they nailed him to the cross and they, and they hung him up. But the same man that he watched die was the same man that wrote the book of Revelations that says that he will overcome them. Yeah. That's the end. Jesus is going to cause you and us to prevail, to have the victory. Our job is to continue to believe it and to receive it and to possess it. He said this, Listen, because I know the cross can be a gruesome thing and it can be heavy, but also it can be glorious. Hallelujah. It can be exciting because then we know what we have in him. Amen. And it says in Revelations 19, 11, I saw the heaven open up. Put the next picture up for me. I'll just read it. Put that next picture up. She's going to Okay, not that one. Do the next one. Hallelujah, Jesus. The last one? Yeah, the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw the heaven open up, and behold, a white horse. That means a horse of war. Yeah, yeah. And he, Jesus, sat upon it and called him, he was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he is judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. See, they were mocking him and scoffing at him, but when he comes back, he's coming back on a horse of war, and he's going to be having, wearing many crowns. Yeah. And he made a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. Blood. And his name was called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon a white horse. Listen, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's me and you. That's me and you. Following behind Jesus on his war horse. Yeah. In wearing a cloak or vesture dipped in blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, wearing a crown of thorns, saying victory, 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 wearing his crown, while the armies of us that are called and chosen follow behind him. Hallelujah. I mean, as God began to show me each step, I just began to be like, man, Lord, this is exciting. Serving you is exciting. Yeah, yeah. But we want to get as many people in that army yes. as we possibly can. And they said, hail, king of the Jews, John 19, 3. And they smote him with their hands. I want to say this. Know this. If you serve the Lord and you feel like people have rejected you for serving the Lord, or maybe you feel rejected for even messing up and then coming back to the Lord. The blood of Jesus is enough. And the blood of Jesus says you're washed as white as snow and you are clean. And you are right with him. But the Bible says this. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world... But I have chosen you what out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. It detests you. Amen. Remember the word which I say unto you, that the servant is not greater than his Lord. 
If they persecuted me, they will what? Persecute you. If they have kept my saying, then they will keep yours also. Matthew 5, 11 says, Blessed are you when men revile you, meaning rail at you, defame you, taunt you, and persecute you, meaning pursue you, and shall say all mere manner of evil, negative things against you falsely for my name's sake. Listen to this. He says, rejoice. Be of good cheer. <laughs> You're being persecuted. They're coming after you. And be exceedingly glad. That word exceedingly glad means jump for joy. Oh my goodness. They were violating me, taunting me, talking evil against me falsely. And Jesus is telling you, you better jump for joy. Ooh, that changed a change, a change of mind. Yeah. Don't it? A renewing of the mind of how we're supposed to handle things. And he said, for your great is your reward in heaven. For if they persecuted me and the prophets before, they will also persecute you. Hallelujah. So I just, I'm showing you and depicting to you each step of Calvary, each step of it is finished, each step that he took to pay and cancel your sin debt, to pay and give you the victory. To pay and give us freedom and deliverance. To, pre to pay and give us healing. And when the, John 19, 6 says, And when the chief priest therefore and the officers saw him, they cried out saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And Pilate saith unto him, Take you him and crucify him, for I have found no fault in him. Even Pilate knew that Jesus was innocent. Amen. And you know what they did, the Jews did? They said, give us Barabbas. And Barabbas was a robber. And still till this day, when Jesus is trying to give himself to you, Come on. and ask you to surrender, and sometimes we say, give us Barabbas. We allow the enemy to continue to rob for us, from us. He, rob, he tried to rob from us then, and he's still trying to rob from us now. Yeah, yeah. Give us Barabbas. Lord. And the next time Jesus says, look, I want you to surrender that. Think to, my, think to yourself, I don't want to say give us Barabbas. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world. Just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. John 19, 17, he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew of Golgotha, where they crucified him. Can you bring up the picture of him on the cross? And two other with him on either side of him and Jesus in the midst. The Lord is constantly fulfilling scripture. 600, 800 years ago, Isaiah 53, 9 says, and he made his grave with the wicked and, the rich in, and, and was rich in his death because he had no violence, neither were there any deceit in his mouth. You know, Jesus, each step of the way, is just fulfilling scripture, fulfilling scripture, fulfilling scripture, fulfilling scripture. That was 600, 700, 800 years ago, prophesied by the prophets at that time. Crucifixion is a method of capital punishment or execution where they would nail the victim to a large wooden beam or stake and eventually left for death. They nailed Jesus in his um, wrists and in his feet and he approximately hung there six hours before he took his last breath and each minute of those hours he was thinking about you and I Thank you. after Jesus knowing all these things were accomplished the scripture was fulfilled he said I thirst the last minutes of his death 
He had fulfilled everything his father had set him to do. It was coming to a close, coming to completion. He was finishing everything. That word accomplished means discharge of debt. He was now accomplishing what he was set out to do. And he said this, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, Naya, if you would come up, he said, it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It is finished are some of the, are the greatest words ever spoken in the word of God. That meaning the law has been fulfilled. Your debt has been paid. The penalty for your sin has been paid. The power of sin has been broken. And one day the presence of sin will be gone. Corruption will put on incorruption. And mortality will put on immortality. He tore the veil of the temple so you could walk in and stand in his presence. He tore the veil so that you could go into the presence of God, where only the priests were allowed to go, so that you could experience the presence of God and I could experience the presence of God for myself. And he said, within the anchor, within the veil, there is an anchor, which is hope. We have an anchor for the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into within the veil. There's a place where you can be that's going to be secure and steadfast, where it anchors you within the veil. Anchor yourself in the presence and the power of God. Jesus. Remember, if you'll stand with me, remember each thing that Jesus has done for you. Yes, Lord. From the scourging, each step of the way, for your healing, for your remedy, for your relief, for your cure of physically, mentally, emotionally. God set that crown of thorns upon Jesus' head so that your mind could be restored. So my mind could be restored. If you are being mocked or you, if you're being laughed at, you will be royalty in the kingdom of God one day with Jesus. And as he died and took his last breath, he said, Pam, it is finished. Whatever you need, it is finished. Whatever you need, it's done already. And all you need to do as a believer, and I need to do as a believer, is believe it and receive it. Yes. Remember, that, that word receive means you need to go after it and possess it for yourself. That's right. You need to believe it. So I don't know what you came in here with, but you can leave with something different. <laughs> You can leave with freedom this morning. You can leave with healing this morning. You can leave with deliverance this morning. Each step that Jesus took towards Calvary was eventually to say, it is finished. Hallelujah. So I don't know what you need from the Lord this morning. But if you need God to move like night, this is a move. We are here for you. God, come and do what you do. We need a move. And I just invite you here just to give thanks to the Lord. Come to the altar. Go, look, when you start thanking him for what he's done, he'll become that in your life. Just come and thank him in faith. And he'll move. And he'll move.